let's let's do the big reveal here. I am literally finding this out at the same time as you guys are. I have not done this test beforehand. I wanted to do this on camera just because I was so curious. The obsessive tape. Welcome back to the Obsessive DP. It looks like we've noticed yet again another flaw with this Raptor, but I'm not sure. <laughs> we've noticed recently in our footage, actually shooting with both these cameras side by side, the Raptor and the Helium, DSMC2 Helium, that there's some sort of color shift with the Raptor. Um, when shooting outside, we've noticed a severe severe IR pollution in some of the colors. You can see here, this blue turned completely magenta, or the, the trees turned totally brown, even though they're actually green, lush trees. Something is changing all of these colors, and I have a hunch why, but I'm actually not sure. I'm planning on doing this video as a test so I actually understand what's going on. And it looks like the issue, from what I understand, is this filter right here, this Schneider, four by 5.65, I think that's it, ND 2.1. So it's a very intense sunglasses, very intense sunglasses. I mean, you can't even see through it on this camera. So it's very dark. This is seven stops, seven stops of light that this is filtering out. <laughs> this is filtering out seven stops of light. And that's the highest ND that we have and the highest ND we ever use uh, we have a lot we have a three we have a nine we have a six as well so what i want to do here is actually use this color checker Ding! by x right i think it's x right is it x right it's by calibrate actually and what that's going to help us do is that's going to help us see what is making the color shift happen it's possible that the dsmc2 helium is also having the same exact color shift, but I don't remember that ever happening on this camera. We've owned this camera for five years. I've never seen that color shift happen. Uh, we've only had this few months and <laughs> I've seen it a lot. And unfortunately we haven't noticed it on a couple of the shoots. So that's a little problem, but nothing you can't fix in post. In Resolve, all you actually have to do is actually grab this color and shift it to return the color back to normal. There was actually a few shots um, recently in a shoot for a video that we used both these cameras side by side. And then I actually had to select the color as well in Resolve and completely mask it out and then change the color versus a simple um, hue to hue adjustment or sat to sat adjustment. So let's, let's do this, let's, let's start this thing. I hope it's not a big deal because I love this camera. I really do love this camera. And seeing these flaws breaks my heart, but it's either an issue with the OLPF filter because this doesn't have one, or it's an issue across all cameras and we're about to find out. I'm really interested, I'm really excited for this because I honestly don't know the answer to this. So hopefully, hopefully we can get this figured out and figure it out quickly. All right, since we're talking about infrared radiation, like the sun, where is the sun? That means it only happens, this, only, this color shift only happens when we're shooting outdoors. So here we have our color checker in bright, bright sunlight. We have this green tree. That's the thing that we've really noticed with the color shift is that green trees turn brown. All right, so here we've got both cameras side by side, similar lenses, exact same settings, and we're about to roll. All right, first up, we're going to, ooh, I got a duck. First off, we have an ND6 in here, so that's two stops of light. We're gonna get a quick, just baseline, because I don't think that this ND has color shift. Actually, we gotta do a baseline, baseline. <laughs> no ND, this is for the first test. Now put the ND on, this is a six. Let's see if there's any sort of shift here with just two stop ND. I mean, so far with either camera, I'm not seeing anything at all in the six. 
So let's max it out without using the 2.1. So we have a three, six, and a nine. We're gonna put all those in, test that. All right, so our ND, what is this called? Our map box has a three, a six, and a nine in it. Three, six, nine, no, the other way. Nine, three, nine, six, three. So that is 18, which is six stops of ND in here with three filters. Um, I know something's gonna happen when you stack filters. You know, you start seeing issues as well, like vignetting and stuff, but let's see, one, if we see any vignetting, and two, if we see any color shifts. So far, I can't tell. It looks a little bit warmer, I'd say. All right, so with the six stops, I'm definitely seeing some more warmness in the trees that I wasn't anticipating because I haven't seen that yet. Trees definitely look warmer. I'm sure the color checker too is also gonna show us that. Uh, this guy, completely green, normal color. This is getting warmer and I mean, that's interesting. It's gotta be an OLPF difference. This has an OLPF filter, this does not. I always thought the trees were warmer because of the color science of the new DSMC3 line. Like the Komodo has warmer greens. The V Raptor seems like it has warmer greens, but now I'm second guessing that it actually wasn't the color science. It's actually the filtration because this camera doesn't have an OLPF filter. All right, now let's really go for it. Let's go for the 2.1 filter. The one that you, this camera probably can't even see through oh, a little bit, a little bit. So 2.1. Let's see what that looks like. You know what's crazy about this is you're learning as I'm learning. I literally had a hunch. You know, I've had a hunch that this is happening just based on you know the, the crazy colors I've been seeing, but this is pretty unique. I was not I was not expecting it to be this intense. Okay, so the 2.1 is in. Okay. Yeah, that is not even close to the green I'm seeing in real life. That is just absolutely brown. It looks like the tree is dead. It looks like the tree is dying a slow, painful death. And I'm sure from the different color checker, you'll be able to see, you know, the exact, a more exact color shift. Honestly though, the green on it looks green I'm curious to see that. I'm looking at the color checker with my eye. The color checker looks decent. The green on it looks green, but that tree is not even close. What is that about? The color checker is getting color zucker. It's getting direct sunlight. So I'm interested to see this on the playback. Hmm. All right. So I have a hunch that this camera is going to be a nice, solid, normal looking green. All right, so that was pretty annoyingly decisive, frustratingly decisive, but there's one more test that I'm going to do that I believe is going to save our life here. Uh, it's still annoying, but we're going to be able to fix this somewhat simply by just using this different brand of Schneider filter. It's called the Rodeo FS ND 1.8 is this version. So I didn't get the 2.1, but I got the 1.8. So it's not an exact match to the 2.1, but we saw at 1.8, there was still a good amount of color shift. This Rhodium brand by Schneider, again, I don't think it's much more expensive than the normal filters. Infrared is everywhere outside. Why, why are we, why are we not filtering it out? And why do we have to get specialized NDs to do it? I don't know, but we're gonna test this and hopefully this guy is gonna be our savior and we're not gonna have to throw this camera in the trash. This has been frustrating to deal with in post because of all the color shifting we're gonna have to do and resolve uh, to all the projects up until now uh, because we did not see this coming. I assumed that the new V Raptor, the DSMC3 line, was equivalent in every way to the DSMC2, but there's several things now that I'm seeing that they did not do the same way and I'm not sure why. All right, I really, I really hope this works because uh, this is gonna save a lot of problems we've been having. And I'm gonna do the helium first for 
gravitas, but this looks normal on the helium. As far as I can tell, it looks just like all the other tests we've tried. The 2.1 and then the 1.5 stacked and then without them. Let's, let's do the big reveal here. I am literally finding this out at the same time as you guys are. I have not done this test beforehand. I wanted to do this on camera just because I was so curious. Um, and then we're probably gonna have to look at the footage later as, as well, just to be sure in the studio, because you know there's other factors out here. Okay. <laughs> uh, hopefully this works. Yep. Yeah, we, wow. We have a normal green, as far as I can tell, an absolute normal green colored tree that we did not see with any of the other ND. I believe even the six, we'll, we'll double check this, even the six had a pretty good color shift. But I'm looking at this now, this rhodium branded by Schneider is absolutely crisp greens. <laughs> it's kind of funny because one of the pluses I thought in this camera was that it warmed up the greens. The problem is we have all these filters now that we can't use outside. You can, we can use these inside. Unless your lights give off a lot of infrared, you're gonna be fine inside with all these. But you're not gonna be fine outside with this camera or the Komodo, unless you have the rhodium, the rhodium line on, by Schneider. Uh, kind of frustrating, but at least we found a solution to the problem.